So let's move on. Sense of the week. <laughs> Keep apologizing, Mike. No. What do you do around here? I don't know. What do you do around know. here? I make. Uh, You've been promising to ever, fix that drop for three weeks. Ever since the Disneyland trip, he, he's he's gone. been gone. Well, we talked about this yesterday that I checked out about seventy five shows ago. <sighs> so, sits of the week. A lot of people's favorite segment of the week. Yes, unless they've been listening to us sit Russell Wilson. Well, then let's start at the quarterback position. Who are you going to sit, Jason? I am going to sit this week in a prime juicy matchup against pretty much the the third best matchup i'm going to sit russell wilson and this is an honorary selection just you're not really sitting no russell wilson way. no way am you're I not sitting as dumb russell as wilson. mike and i yeah i i i never i i didn't i didn't choose that you know the best but i'm making an honorary selection so that everyone out there who has russell wilson can have full confidence to that start he will explode he's going ham and jason will 100 percent take credit if Russell Wilson has a bad game, you he'll say, betcha. say, oh, I, I sat him. Remember? Yep. Check yep. out the audio. All right, but you guys realize actual... you, you can't say going ham any time within an hour of lunch. Starving. Because I just get hungry. Yeah, and we're in the we're in the Christmas season. Want a honey baked? Uh, that's a little free advertisement out there. <laughs> for, HP. For, for honey baked For honey baked <laughs> ham, the generic. It's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's an ad for ham. <laughs> You're getting honey, some free ads for ham. Honey baked ham isn't generic. Are you kidding me? All right. Chocolate. Here's free my ad actual- for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> They're hey, going to make a you, fortune. If you haven't had chocolate this holiday season, check out chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So getting back Use to the promo code ballers <laughs> when you go buy when you buy chocolate. And we'll put on 15 extra pounds at your for grocery free. store. Yeah. You're right. local, just tell them. Just repeat the code to them. All right, we'll start this over again. Real sit of the week for Jason. Real sit of the week is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan was still started in over 30% of the leagues. Why would you do that? Please stop it. If you have him, I would say you can drop him. You you do not need him. He plays Carolina twice in the playoffs, and one of those is this week. Give me Bortles. Give me Winston. Give me anybody else. Anybody else. Matt Ryan is Nick at the bottom Foles? of the barrel. Give well, me almost anybody else. <laughs> I'll take K- Matt Ryan over Nick Case Foles. Keenum? Give me Matt Ryan over right. Case Keenum. So, okay. okay. All right. That's good, so, good to hear. There's a certain like five or six names that you just don't even put into consideration. But All right. My quarterback sit of the week. I'm going to go with a guy that I have a hard time sitting just in general, getting over the mental hurdle of sitting in. But Phillip Rivers, uh, it's not your year. It's just not. And, and that team, the offense, losing Keenan Allen really was the, the biggest blow to that offense. Woodhead's done nothing, and Rivers now gets to travel to Kansas City, who's fighting for the playoffs, who's been playing incredibly, who might have Justin Houston back. And in San Diego last time they played, he only put up eight. I mean, this is just not a good matchup for Phillip Rivers. So I, I don't put him in consideration. There's so many other guys. And Stevie Johnson left last game with a groin pull, so we don't even know his yeah. status. And Dontrell Inman left with a neck injury. Yeah. There's, there's just nobody left. No good. But uh, the easiest. So the, throughout, the year, the throughout the year, throughout the year, uh, I have I've come on completely on board with this guy. Uh, and, and I had several times throughout the show where I said, I will stop doubting this particular player. Uh, we, we have a, a drop that's become infamous. I would like to play it now in recognition. Wait, wait, wait. Where him. is it? Where is it? Oh. Send in the car. Send in the car. As in, don't send in Derek Carr because he is playing against Denver. Now, he did okay when he traveled to Denver. He put about 250 in a touchdown, but that's just not going to get it done in your fantasy playoffs. Uh, he's not a guy I can trust going up against the best defense in the league. I'm sitting him down. Yep. I'm, I'm sorry, Derek Carr. I, I, I do believe in you, but there's just there's just so many better options this There's week. different matchups, yeah. All right. All right, it's time. We're going to go ahead and talk about running back sits of the week. I'm going to go with a guy that Mike disagrees with. Yes. Uh, I I think that you are um, you're risking a lot by starting and trusting Jeremy Hill this week. I know they're in Cincinnati, but you're playing Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's rushing defense has been outstanding. The last time these two teams met up, Jeremy Hill had 15 for 60. And I think the offense only is, uh, I think it's ascending for Pittsburgh. 
So I think this is a high-scoring game. In a high-scoring game, I think Gio Bernard's on the field more than Jeremy Hill. So, yes, we've said Jeremy Hill's on fire. He's had three good weeks. But last week was against Cleveland, and I'm pumping the brakes, and I'm going to put him on my bench. Yeah, I, I I understand the playing the matchup. I just I I personally think that the uh, are you starting him against me? Well, I I have to decide between him and Amendola for my right, flex. Right. So I haven't made that decision yet, but I just I think the team is uh, getting Hill back on track. But I I don't completely disagree with the, the the sitting of him. And my sit of the week at the running back position, I'm going with Demarco Murray. We've talked about Ryan Matthews as back to practice. Sit of the year. And Demarco Murray, even if Ryan Matthews was out this week, he's just not a guy I'm going to trust. I I. If uh, I understand that a uh, Murray owners may not have a better option, but if you've got, if you have anything that's a better that has a better matchup than Demarco Murray, who's playing against the Buffalo Bills, who have a uh, their defense while they were a little lapsed last week, they're they've been quite good. Uh, I'm not playing Demarco Murray against the Bills. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, that was one of the guys in my consideration as well. I'm going to give a, a small two pack. Of, of low-hanging fruit here. Uh, the first is C.J. Anderson. C.J. Anderson, is, the reason why I'm, I'm given two is because he might not even play this week. But if he... Inactive of the week. Right. So, but if he does play and he's on your roster, I would, I, I would advise you to try to find someone else. Last time he hurt his ankle, he didn't come back strong. It looked, you know, like it affected his game. So I'm not going to trust him in a timeshare with a hurt ankle if he is playing. The other guy is equally uh, a low-hanging fruit, but he is still started in a quarter percent of the leagues and owned in almost every league. A quarter percent? A, <laughs> sorry, 25%. Okay, big difference. <laughs> big difference. <laughs> Math. Yeah. Uh, I was and, I was tuned out for a second. Yeah. I even heard that one. Yeah. Almost nobody is almost. playing this guy. <laughs> One guy in Saskatchewan is starting him, and I want him on a bench. All right, yeah. go ahead. Continue. Yeah, that uh so my guy is do not start Melvin Gordon. I mean, okay. He's playing in Kansas City. Stop it. He hasn't been good all year. He fumbled last game, so we don't even know his workload. I would put in almost anyone. I would put in guys off of the waiver. I would play Charles Sims over Melvin Gordon. I mean, I I just don't expect anything from Melvin Gordon. Yeah. I that makes sense, and the the workload has really changed. That the the Chargers are really, really, really trying to get Melvin Gordon going, and it's it's just not working. And that's a a horrific defense to get it going against. All right, well we're talking wide receiver sits. I'm gonna go with a guy that I think probably should be cut in a lot of leagues. If you have a need really? for a spot, you're gonna cut and, him? Yes, yeah, and that's Randall Cobb. At a minimum, what I wrote down here was sit his butt down. Yeah. Sit him down. Last week, he had 11 points. He had 11 points because he fell on a fumble in the end zone. Otherwise, he was four for 29. He is not getting involved in the offense. He has not done it for, I think, eight consecutive weeks in single digits. I think if you, if I had to sign, I'd sign Devontae Parker and I'd cut Randall Cobb. Hmm. Because I want upside and I want to win my playoffs. And I'm not going to win my playoffs with Randall Cobb unless he has a resurgent game out of nowhere. And it really, at this point, would be out of nowhere. So I'm, I, and he plays Dallas this week, and yeah. Dallas's defense is very good against the pass. They're fifth against the pass. So I'm sorry, his name is delicious, but his uh, meal is not. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you there. I talked yesterday about in our own league of record the possibility that I might drop Randall Cobb, and that's even in a keeper league. Obviously, he would be picked up by someone else. But uh, my my wide receiver this week to sit is uh, play in Denver, and we know. <laughs> I mean, we know still. Can it be two? I'll let you include both if you want. Sure. Yeah. Go I've, for I've it. got Amari Cooper as my sit, but it, let's let's throw Crabtree in there as well. What are you expecting? What's the upside there? The roof starts to sink. You've got a real low ceiling on both those guys. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you sit both of them down. Wide receivers are so deep. You can find guys. You know, Devontae Parker is a perfect example. Play Devontae Parker over these guys because you have the potential. That's not to say that Devontae Parker is clearly going to outscore them, but the potential to have a monster game in a playoff matchup is there with Devontae Parker. They've the the Denver Broncos have given up one still one touchdown to all wide receivers <laughs> all year. Is that like the inverse of the Chiefs offense of last year? <laughs> yes. It's almost the same thing where the Chiefs wide receivers couldn't score all year long. Yeah, so yeah. Not a good matchup. Yep. 
just be aware of the matchup and, and find other options to play. Uh, the guy that I'm going to sit at the wide receiver position has been uh, a darling of our show because he gets the targets, and that is Kamar Aiken of the Baltimore Ravens. The matchup is just too bad against the Seahawks. Schaub was already banged up last week. It, it probably will not take much to get him out of the game. And then you are dealing with Jimmy Clausen throwing the ball. I'm just not going to trust Kamar Aiken in this situation. I, I don't blame you at all. Yeah, and Matt Schaub reports came out that he's going to stay the starter, but, I mean, it's not a pretty picture. So, Because well, you, you got to play Schaub over Clausen, who was just recently signed, but it, it uh, the Seahawks – the Seahawks are firing on all cylinders right now, especially their defense that just shut down uh, Antonio Brown and completely shut down Minnesota. All right, tight ends. My tight end sit of the week is Kyle Rudolph because he's taking on Arizona. Uh, I put him on the list because it's uh, it, Minnesota needs to win. So if you're wanting to play the narrative angle of they're going to to bring it, they just got embarrassed last week. Uh, you like sometimes we like a team to turn it around completely after that type of a situation, but I don't think it's going to happen for Arizona. And Kyle Rudolph is not a guy that I'm going to depend on, even though he's had a couple good weeks here in recent memory. I'm not going to put Kyle Rudolph in against Arizona. I think it's very fair. I'm, I'm going to take the book into my quarterback start of the week. Phillip Rivers was my sit down, and I'm going to sit Antonio Gates. Yes, they don't have a lot of options there, and maybe he gets you some small baseline, but. Kansas City is the number one team against guarding tight ends, uh, win guarding tight ends, and he had two and a half fantasy points last time they played. I just, I'm not excited about Roland Gates out there. I know you probably don't have another option, so maybe you have to. I still think you probably start Gates over, you know, Will Ty from New York or th that category of tight ends, but I'm not, it, you know, you need to win. You're playing a big seed. You might need to swing for the fence and play ASJ, play Richard Rodgers, play somebody else that gives you a shot. Yeah, for, for me, I'm going to go with a guy who had a great week this last week. So you wonder, is this a trend? Can we see this again? But this, I believe, came out of nowhere for him. He had a long stretch run of, of nonsense games, and that's Charles Clay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and we don't put up with nonsense. We don't on put this up show. with that. Uh, Charles Clay is facing the Philadelphia Eagles, who've been giving up a lot of points through the air. But what you don't realize is they've been giving up very few to the tight end. It's all going to the wide receivers. Scott Chandler did get a touchdown this last week, but that was one of four touchdowns through the air. Most of them were going to the wide receiver position. You've got, you know, you, you talked about talk, Sammy yeah, Watkins. I love Sammy. He'll probably be my start of the week. Right. So, I mean, I and, and I see that. I love Tyrod Taylor and Sammy Watkins, but I'm not having the same love for Charles Clay in that matchup. 